Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a combination equation. We're doing counting for the first time, so I'm excited. Let's get started. We have n choose r equals 1984 and we're solving for and and r values. So n choose r is defined as number of ways you can choose r objects from a group of n objects. Of course, r can equal n, in which case you should have one choice. Okay. Or r can be zero, in again, in that case you would have one one way to do it because you would be choosing nothing. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some special cases first. So if r is equal to zero, just like I mentioned, if r is equal to zero, then we're going to be getting something like n choose zero equals 1984. But as you see, this is impossible because n choose zero is always one. And obviously, 1984 does not equal one. So that would be a problem. In this case, we don't get any solutions. So this is false. Okay. We don't get anything from here. This can't happen. The second case we're going to look at is if r is equal to 1. Now what happens if r is equal to 1? Then we get something like n choose 1 is equal to 1984. And as you know, n choose 1, now think about it. You have n objects, n marbles, n books, whatever. And then you're going to choose one of them only. In how many ways can this be done? Well, obviously you can choose any one of these objects. And that could be done in n ways. So from here, we get n equals 1984. Now, is that a valid solution? Absolutely, because it satisfies the equation. So it's all good. So we're going to save the solution for now and then look for other ones. Let's save this. At the end, we're going to put it all together. Okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to look at is what happens if r is equal to 2, right? Would that give me a solution? Obviously, I'm not going to go through all the numbers all the way through 1984 or whatever, but I just want to look at some smaller cases so that, you know, I can get an idea at least. So if r is equal to 2, then I'm basically talking about n choose 2 is equal to 1984. Now, at this point, it might make sense to talk about the general formula for n choose r to give it to you so that you have an idea what that looks like if you haven't seen that before. So in general, n choose r can be found using the following formula, and that will look like this. n times n minus 1, dot, 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 all the way up to n minus r plus 1 divided by r factorial. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of this, but just let me... Uh, let me tell you that the numerator is basically the number of permutations you can generate with n and r. And the bottom one is always r factorial. Okay, so now in this case, what we need to do is with n choose 2, since n choose 2 is equal to 1984, this basically implies that, okay, so I'm going to expand like factorial, but I'm going to stop when I have two factors. So it means that it's n times n minus 1 divided by n. The bottom one is always going to be 2 factorial. So we're just going to divide by 2. Okay, I want this to equal 1984. Is that possible at all? Let's go ahead and check it out. n times n minus 1 is equal to... Now, if you multiply these two numbers by, you know, I mean 1984 by 2, you're going to be getting something like 3968, 3968 basically. Now, if you think about it, I mean something like the square root of 30, uh, 39, 68, right? So if you think about it, for example, what could give you something like this? 70 times 70 is 49,000, so that would be too large. 60-ish something, right? But if notice that these are two consecutive numbers, right? And their product is not going to end in 8. If you think about it, you know, 1 times 2, 2 times 3, 3 times 4, 4 times 5, 5 times 6, 6 times 7, it's never going to give you something that ends in 8, which means that we don't have any integer solutions here. So no integers will satisfy this equation. All right? So that means we don't have any solutions for r equals 2. Did we have any solutions for r equals 1? Yes. Did we have any solutions for r equals 0? No. So at this point, we only have a solution for r equals 1. And at the end, like I said earlier, we're going to put it all together and write the solution set. Okay. Now, my next step is going to be looking at other cases, of course, but I'm not going to numerically go through every number because that would take forever, right? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a blanket approach. So I'm going to say if r is greater than or equal to 3, because we already covered 0, 1, and 2, now let's say r is 3 or greater than 3. Obviously, 
Uh, and again, there's a, there's some symmetry here. Like for example, 1984 choose two would be the same as 1984 choose 1982. So considering those as well, we can safely say that if R is greater or equal to three, then N choose R is going to be greater than or equal to N choose three. Okay. So for example, if R is equal to five, then obviously N choose five is going to be greater or equal to N choose three in this case. Now notice that N choose R is given as 1984. That was our original problem, right? So we can basically replace N choose R with 1984 here. And this is going to give us N choose three is less than or equal to 1984. So this is nice because this gives us an inequality. Of course, we're trying to solve an equation, but inequalities are going to help us understand the boundaries and boundaries are very important here. Okay, so let me go ahead and expand this using the same rule, the formula that I just gave you for n choose r. So this is the practical version. There's also another factorial, factorial version. So n choose three can be written as n times n minus one times n minus two all over three factorial, which is six. And then this needs to be less than or equal to 1984. And obviously I'm gonna multiply both sides by six and that's gonna give me n times n minus one times n minus two is less than or equal to six times 1984. That's going to give you 11,904. Such a large number, right? But that's okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I would like to go ahead and, you know, distribute this expression and get something, you know, more concrete. So what am I supposed to do here? Let's go ahead and distribute. Now, what, what do we get from here? Well, these two are going to give me n squared minus 3n plus 2. If I multiply that by n, I should be getting something like n cubed minus 3n squared plus 2n is less than or equal to 11,904. Okay, cool. Now, we're looking at a function, and we want it to be the function values to be less than or equal to 11,904. Now, in order, to be able to, in order to be able to solve this inequality, I kind of have to turn it into an equation. First, let me look at some of the boundary values. For example, what happens if this expression on the left hand side equals this value? All right, so, well, from here we can possibly find some n values. Obviously, it's difficult to solve, but you can use some technology like Wolfram Alpha and solve this equation. And I did it for you, don't worry about it. So, I'm going to talk about it in a little bit. But before that, I want to say something else. What am I going to say? I'm going to talk about a little bit of calculus here. Hopefully, you don't mind. Uh, because in order to understand how a function behaves, we kind of need to look at its derivative, right? So if this function is called f of n, f of n, and I'm talking about the left-hand side only, I'm not including the constant here, let's just look at this basic function, because you know why? This function is very easy to graph. So let's go ahead and check its maximum, minimum values, so on and so forth. So if I differentiate this function, I'm going to be getting something like 3n squared minus 6n plus 2. And if I set it equal to 0, so from here, I'm going to be finding the, you know, uh, my maximum and minimum points for this function. And there are going to be some irrational numbers, but, uh, you know, it's just going to give me some ideas. So at, at least uh, I'm going to know what it looks like. But also, I want to say something about this function here that I can actually... Since I, it was factored, right? It was in the factor form, remember? n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. So if you go ahead and graph this function, let's make a coordinate plane here. Uh, we could probably make that a little nicer, right? Uh, so we can make our line straight like this and like that. Okay, great. At least it's better than curvy. So now... I'm going to go ahead and graph this function. Notice that 0 is an x-intercept, uh, 1 is an x-intercept, and 2 is an x-intercept. So here's one big question. Is the function going to be uh, concave up, concave down, and what is it going to look like, right? So the derivative is going to tell me that. So if you look at the derivative, so if you go ahead and solve this equation uh, for n, you're going to be getting basically the following values. n is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 36 minus 4ac. That's going to be a 24 divided by 2a, which is going to be 6. You know the quadratic formula. That should be easy, right? Plus minus. That's going to be 12, which is 2 root 3 divided by 6. And if I divide everything by 2, I get 3 plus root 
3 over 3. Of course, I can just write it this way too. So it kind of looks like this. 1 plus minus root 3 over 3. And root 3 is about 1.6. Let's say 1.8. It's like 0 0.6. So 1 plus 0 0.6 is going to be like 1.6. So I do have an extremum value, uh, a critical point, I should say, right? Somewhere here. And I also have something like 1 minus 0 0.6 is going to be like 0 0.4. So it's between 1 and 0. Something like this. Okay. Now here's a million dollar question. What is the function going to behave? What is it going to look like, right? So let's go ahead and look at the second derivative of this function. And that's going to look like 6n minus 6. And obviously, when you look at this function, uh, you're going to notice that this function is going to have a 0 at n equals 1, which means that at n equals 1, we're going to have an inflection point. And uh, for n is uh, less than 1, if n is less than 1, the second derivative of the function is going to be negative, which means that it's going to be concave down. So here, this is n equals 1, right? Our function is going to be concave down, and it's going to be concave up. So what is it going to look like then if I just go ahead and graph it, right? At 1, it's supposed to change, uh, what is it called? Um, concavity, right? So it's going to look like this, basically. If you go ahead and, you know, do the math, uh, notice that I'm going to have a value something like this, you know? So something like this, and I should be getting something like this. So what's going on here? At 1, the function is changing concavity. We have a solution at, actually, that's not true. So it's supposed to be, okay, so let me go ahead and clear this and re redo it. Okay. So basically what happens here is, let me, I think this is going to, let me get rid of this. Okay. All right. So basically my function is going to look like the following. So I'm going to have something like this. It's going to go down and then it's going to go up again. So what are these values? Let's go ahead and place them. This is 0, this is 1, this is 2. Like I said earlier, it's going to have something between 1 and 2 and something between 0 and 1. And exactly at 1, it's going to change concavity, which means it's going to go from concave down to concave up. Now, what is that supposed to mean? All this, you know, garbage talk, right? Okay, so this all means that what matters is basically, we're looking at, come on, we're looking at values that are n values that are, uh, r is greater than or equal to 3, right? So our n values are obviously going to be greater than that as well. So basically what this means is that for r greater than, uh, or any greater than uh, equal to 2, this function is going to be increasing, right? So here's the idea. So my n values, if you look at my n values, this is n, this is f of n. If you look at my n values, n cubed minus 3n squared plus 2n, right? And I want this to equal 11,904. Now, take a look at this. I want my f of n value to be equal to this. So somewhere up here, of course, it's not going to fit here. So let's just go ahead and you know, change the scale a little bit, but somewhere we're going to hit that value. So the question is, what is that n value? And what is that going to look like, right? So basically, if you solve this equation, you're going to get an answer, right? And that answer is going to look like the following. n is going to be approximately 23.8. Now, what is that supposed to mean? So could that be a solution? Well, maybe something nearby like 23 or 24, but we need to look more into this. So let's go ahead and explore a little bit more. Now, notice one thing which is significant here. When you look at factors of 1984, why am I looking at it? Because if you look at n choose r, it's supposed to look like this. n times n minus 1, dot, 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 n minus r plus 1, divided by r factorial. And I want it to equal 1984. Obviously, factors of 1984 are going to go here. And some of them are going to be canceled out by r factorial but not all the time. So let's go ahead and look at some special factors. If you factor 1984, you're going to notice that it's basically, it can be written as 2 to the 4th power times 31. So 31 plays an important role here because it's a prime number and it's pretty large. Obviously, if we can prove that we have a solution at that point, or we prove that there are no solutions at that point, then we can kind of look at 2 to the 4th power as well. But let me go ahead and take 31 and work with it. So what am I going to do with that? Well, I want my expression, this expression, right, to be less than or equal to 0. So the question is, what n values are going to make it possible, right? Okay. 
And obviously I'm looking for something larger than three or greater than or equal to three. Let me put it that way. But since 31 plays an important role, I'm just going to set it as a boundary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this polynomial by n minus 31. And to save you the trouble, I did the work for you. So if you go ahead and do the polynomial division or manipulate the you know, coefficients to get that, you're going to be getting something like this. This polynomial is divided by n minus 31. And the quotient is going to be quadratic, obviously, n squared plus 28n plus 870. And then, of course, you're going to have a remainder, and that's going to be 15,066. And again, you want this to be less than or equal to zero. Awesome. Now, this is great because we can kind of look at it from an n minus 31 perspective. Now, what is so significant about the quadratic is that if you check the discriminant of this equation, because if you look at half of 28 squared, obviously this number is way too large. Therefore, this equation actually has a discriminant that is less than zero, which means it has no real solutions, which means it's never going to be zero. Since it's never going to be zero, we have to look at this here. And obviously, you're basically looking at something like a product that is less than or equal to zero with the addition of a positive number. So that means that this expression needs to be, this expression needs to be uh, less than uh, zero, right? So what is that supposed to mean? It basically means that n minus 31 needs to be negative. Otherwise, you're going to take a positive expression, multiply it by another positive expression, and add a positive number, you'll never get a negative. Make sense? So this needs to be a negative quantity. And what is that supposed to mean? It just means that n is less than 31. Okay? Great. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Well, if n is less than 31, that's bad news. That means that n choose r is not going to equal 1984 because, because it does not contain, it does not contain a factor or it does not contain, I should say, maybe it does not contain 31, which is a factor of 1984. And obviously, obviously it needs to be there, but that means that there are no other solutions to this equation. And that leaves us with what? Let's go ahead and summarize it all and then wrap it up. Okay, this basically means that we don't really have any solutions for n greater than or equal to three, no solutions or no integer solutions, whatever you want to call that. That means that we end up with two solutions, to, two solutions to this equation. And the solutions are going to look like the following. So n comma r is going to be 1984 comma 1. Remember, n equals 1984 is going to work as well as, you know, r equals 1 is going to work, obviously. And 1984 comma 1983, because these two quantities are equal. All right, so let me put an or here. And this brings us to the end of this video. Sorry for the length of the video. We had to talk about different things. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.